Hi, I'm here at OFC and I'm with David Hurd. He's the CEO with Infinera. Welcome, good to talk to you again. Good to see you again. We've both been on the same circuit. We, uh, we have. MWC right into OFC. Yep. You had a lot of meetings with uh, high-level people. What what are some of the themes you see coming from that show into the show? You know, when you when when I saw the sea of people, eighty-eight thousand at OFC, and I think close to ten thousand here. Eighty-eight thousand you know, MWC, yeah. MWC ten, yeah. and and ten thousand at, at OFC. You think, man, there must be a hell of a lot going on. But when I talk to our customers, their real drive is we got to get back to basics. Um, traffic's been growing at 35% per year since 2000, since we've both been you know, in the industry, uh, well after we've been in the industry. And we're starting to see carriers say, hey, look, I need the lowest cost per bit. I need more bits uh, out to the end consumer, which means more bits per fiber, more bits per radio. And I got to drive power down. There's data centers going everywhere. You've got how many devices in your home all being powered. And the cost of energy in Europe's gone up by two to four times in the last 18 months. So it's really kind of back to the basics. Do those three things, agile and secure, that's it. You covered it, yeah. yeah. What, are, what are you seeing? Uh, I, I agree with you 100%. I call the mood a bit more sober yeah. at MWC, kind of the same, yeah. back, back to basics, less flashy widgets and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but on the power thing, it's interesting. Do you, are you seeing that as primarily a Europe-driven trend, or are you seeing that filter out back here? Overall, if you look at power consumption overall and its cost in the network, whether you look at it at AT&T or Verizon, or you look at Meta and what it takes to power these data centers, um, we have to continue to drive more traffic. Uh, again, lowest cost per bit, lowest uh, power per bit. Those are the measures that they're looking for with us, as long as, as well as an environmental consciousness to being green. Yes, right, agree. And it's, that was something that. I hadn't been used to over the last 20 years. And over the last three, it's really been a big driver. Yeah, it's coming in RFPs and, and uh, oh, as you say, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's table quite, stakes Quite now. significant. Yeah. So, you know, so kind of back to Infinera, you guys, uh, well, you've expanded over the years for for sure, but still, in the in the big scheme of things, you know, focus on optics, right? Um, yes. Yeah, I would say we are an optical specialist. Specialist, and and, a, and an optical manufacturer of semiconductors, the only one that makes them here in the United States. So how you know you look at the the big picture of you know, of course lower cost. Uh, I would say generate revenue is is another one, and, and then the power. What does Infinera do specifically in its you know, place within that ecosystem to no, address those issues? It's a really good question. I came to the company because the company was vertically integrated. And what that meant is the engines that drive all of our solutions, whether they be kind of pluggable solutions that go into the metro that are uh, that are powering up homes to one gig and five gig speeds, who, who would have ever thought, uh, all the way into the core networks where you're delivering terabits of traffic. The Moore's law of optics is all about the chipset and the optical engine, thus the race car uh, behind us here. I got to go in that uh, later too. Yeah, you do. Got to take a spin. And that's what our customers want to do, is they want to upgrade their network constantly to get the Moore's law effect. Again, uh, more capacity per fiber, uh, lower cost per bit every generation they move to, as well as lower power per bit and have, still have that agility. So we can use the same car and we can continue to pop in uh, more powerful engines depending on the service provider's need. And again, having our own fab and doing our own chip design, you know, all that bill of materials for like long haul networks of that car, 70% of that bill of materials is what we do and we control it. And that's been significantly raised in its importance over the last three years. So there's the supply chain issues, I'm sure, is, is part of what you're, what you're alluding to there. Um, yeah. Um, but, you know, beyond, so originally, back to the early days of, of Infinera, it was all about, you know, the PIC, the Protonic yeah. Integrated Circuit was the discussion. And then yeah. it got kind of talking about lots of other things. And now is it kind of more back to the... The PIC? Is that it, sort of the, what you're saying by it, vertical integration? Yeah, or when there... you take the, the PIC and the optics that we bake all yeah. into the photonically integrated circuit and we package it in our facility in Pennsylvania, our advanced semiconductor packaging facility, and you put a DSP, which is a small portion of the bill of materials, but certainly drives nice power performance in a pluggable, just the optic or yeah. just the PIC is about 65% of the bill of materials there. Um, and again, it drives a ton of the performance of the network. We have all those pieces. 
And again, in a, in a long haul network, we're gonna take a long drive with lots of terabits, it's 60 to 70% of the bill of materials. When I get closer to your home and we're in the Metro, you know, that is about 40 to 50% of the systems that go out there are these pluggables. Mm -hmm. And we've done something new in ours by putting software on them. So you can power up and power down only what you use. Very green, very power effective, and really drives a lower operating cost. What, um, you know, this is one of the things I think comes up with Infinera and really in the industry, this whole thing, embedded optics versus pluggables optics. What, you know, Infinera is kind of a, a foot in each. What, yeah. is it all, is, yeah. that, is that it? Yeah, or like that, what, no, you where, got what it. are you looking at? There's the not future? a one size fits all. And you know, um, the great thing about optical and the reason I also came to the company is uh, the most cost effective way to get uh, low latency, high traffic, low cost per bit, low power per bit out to the edge of the network is now coherent coherent optical, mm -hmm. and that's what we do, and that means you dip, need different sizes and shapes to get there. So we do that with big embedded engines to go across subsea cables between continents, between huge data centers, but as you get towards the home, that's like putting a Ferrari engine, right, in a, in a, in a tuk-tuk <laughs> that's, that's gonna do some taxi services local in a, in a community. And that's why our pluggables and having them software defined is so important right. to what we do. So, so kind of both, pretty, pretty evenly mixed too. Uh, I don't among them, like or? religious technology wars. I'm no. a capitalist, and and I, I I'm very uh, consumed with customer uh, needs, and so choosing one and, and having a religion behind it in our industry has never worked out quite well. Right. Having a foot in both camps because this isn't just a revolution, right? It's an evolution, and, and ha giving our service providers and our customers the ability to again change the engines in their car and not have to re-onboard mm -hmm. cuts out waste increases speed to service so it really is it's not just about being a geneva it's yeah. about being able to be flexible and agile for our customer needs which aren't all uh, homogeneous they are not they are not uh, even among the hyperscalers i think there's differences but in, in telecom it's yeah. it's a lot more broad by region by size by type um, we're into March 2023. We got some months left ahead of us. Give us a little bit of insights into what we can expect from Infinero through the rest of the year. Yeah, I think, you know, look, we're really excited about the roadmap that we've put out here. Uh, we used to talk about one engine at a time. Uh, now at that, again, you call them embedded engines, right? Yeah. That are going the long distances. We're in development of two engines, uh, a 1.2 terabit engine that, you know, goes towards uh, 150 gigabod, which is what gets your cost down. All the way to ICE 8, that's a 300 gigabot engine. Um, while we're doing that, we have three pluggables out. And it's very consistent with our strategy, which we call 8 by 4 by one an 800 gig pluggable, a 400 gig pluggable, and a 100 gig pluggable, all software defined. So that area, as you can see, is uh, oversubscribed right now, which is great. So I think what you can continue to expect is that portfolio to come out in the market. And again, the cooperation we've seen with carriers around here is really inspiring. Yeah, yeah and there's quite a buzz around this show this year, which is nice. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah, nice to good. see, especially after us all staring in a team screen or a yes, Zoom screen yes, for a couple, exactly. of, a good couple to, of years. Good to see yeah. people in person. All right, well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Always good catching up with you, Dave. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see you at the next show. We will. Yeah. All right, take all care. Right, bye. All right, thanks. Thanks.